Sasha, do you want to do something? Right now, Zach is channeling every one of his natural boy instincts. I'm surprised he hasn't put red LEDs up yet. I think we could all agree whether you believe in ghosts or not. Most shows revolving around them are mostly, if not completely, fake. They often rely heavily on editing, not only to make the shows more entertaining, but to convince us that they are, in fact, in the presence of the supernatural. And while there are roughly 13,000 different ghost series, we're going to be focusing on probably the most well-known one, Ghost Adventures. Ghost Adventures aired from 2008 to... Well now, it's still going on, which is not something we see a lot on this channel. Ghost Adventures also aired on the Travel Channel, because where else would it air? You know the deal, okay? A show must air on a network that has a very faint relation to the show's subject matter. I mean, they are traveling, though. They do travel from place to place, so there you have it. You see, the Travel Channel went through a similar transformation that many other cable networks went through in the last 15 years, basically making it unrecognizable from its original programming, and I think Ghost Adventures was the beginning of that. It's kind of like the moment that TLC, the Learning Channel, aired their first, hey, look at those people, type show. Now the learning in TLC is learning that, you know what? Things could always be worse. I think I'm doing alright. Now back to Ghost Adventures, it's a pretty straightforward show. We follow a group of guys that travel around to different supposedly haunted locations in hopes of collecting evidence of said paranormal activity. Now the main host of this show, Zach Bagans, is... Well, he's everything I would have hoped for when making a video about this show. Danny Gonzalez honestly put it best in one of his most recent videos when he referred to Zach as the Chris Angel of Paranormal Investigation. Ghost Adventures, which is hosted by what I like to call the Chris Angel of Paranormal Investigation, Zach Baggin. And I am so pissed that it's not my joke because it is 100% on the money. And to be the Chris Angel of something, you don't have to look like Chris Angel, although it helps, but it's much more than that. You basically just have to be an expert at something that's not real and make people uncomfortable in the process. But the jet black hair and tight black clothes are a plus. Now the episode we're going to be watching today is the Valentine's Day special, where they stay at the Wayside Inn, and you will see in a moment why I chose this episode, but for now let's just get into it. This does not look right, and I'm not comfortable sitting here at all with all these couples. What? Three guys chilling Valentine's weekend in a romantic cabin. Yeah, Aaron. <laughs> right? Like, look at those three guys sitting at the same table eating dinner. That's like, like, you can't get gayer than that. And you, you know you know what they say. The, the old saying goes, two's company, three's fucking gay. Now, because this is the Valentine's Day special, they spend this beginning section of the episode just reminiscing about different romantic-themed hauntings that they've had in the past. But it's so funny because I'm pretty sure they're at the hotel they're going to be staying in for this episode, but all those people around them are so obviously background extras that can't talk. So they're just sitting around, pretending to eat, pretending to talk, listening to this weird and forced conversation between the guys. I'm used to being locked in demonic insane asylums, dude. Or like battlefields. That's more of my speed, not lovey-dovey <laughs> little bistros. Yeah, guys, this place is like not what I'm used to. I'm just different. I'm used to dungeons and battlefields. And dude, you're a fucking TV host. Give me a break. But we've been at some romantic locations before. Tombstone, Where? Arizona, Birdcage. Well, they've almost been romantic. I'm gonna do you guys a favor and let you know that this is not the whole episode. I say that because it goes on for like eight or nine minutes, and for a while I thought that this was gonna be just a fucking clip show. But after sitting through all eight minutes of that, they finally get on to where they are and why they're there. But we're at the Longfellow's Wayside Inn, right? And I heard this place has like a female spirit that died of a broken heart. And apparently there's like hundreds of guys that have had like intimate encounters with this spirit. Basically, Zach heard that there's a horny ghost at the Wayside Inn, and he wants in. <laughs> nice. I know you're married. Yeah. Aaron, I don't know what's going on in your love life. I don't want to know. <laughs> it's not good. And I don't even know what's going on in your love life. <laughs> no, man, it's bad. I'm having a really rough time. Finally get some action. That's your Valentine's Day gift. You don't get no gift because you're married. You? You're not going to compete against me. It's all you, man. I know it's all me. I'm sorry, Aaron. You can't compete with Zach. I mean, his shirt is tight. Literally, it's, it's really fucking tight. And he's got a faux hawk. Jerusha, the ghost, has never seen a faux hawk, I guarantee. I have a toast to make. It's Valentine's Day weekend. I know that you're all sitting here and having fun with your, your loved one and you're kissing over here. It's cute, you know? Does he know that they can't respond to him? Like, they, because they're background extras, they just have to sit there and stare at him, frozen in place like they're watching their sleep paralysis demon? There's a spirit here of a woman that is, that is very beautiful, okay? She's gorgeous, and that's who is my Valentine. That's who I'm going to hook up with. Now, if you notice, Zach specifically said he's hooking up with Jerusha. There is no romance, no nuance. He is climaxing tonight. But throughout the episode, he'll go back and forth from being like the guy just asking questions, wondering how some sick fuck could have a fetish of 
getting with a ghost, and then explicitly saying he wants to get with a ghost. It is said she only focuses her attention on the men who sleep in her bedroom, something we'll put to the test during our lockdown. We will put it to the test. I am counting on it. So now we get some backstory on the ghost Jerusha that they're focusing on this episode. Basically, Jerusha, while living at the inn, fell in love with a sailor that was passing through. He, of course, having to eventually venture back out into sea, promising his return, but never returning. Thus, obviously, Jerusha would die of a broken heart. That's how that works. But now Zach's gonna go around and talk to some folks and get the word on Jerusha as he prepares for his big evening with her. And as he's talking with one of the workers, we really get to see just how professional and well put together the guys are. A young man she, she met here who was a seaman went was away. A, a, a seaman, a, a, a man of the... Um... So Jer Jerusha uh, fell in love to a seaman and this uh, sea man. Um... A sailor then. Okay, let's, yeah, let's do a sailor. <laughs> so she fell in love with uh, a sea man. <laughs> and, um, okay, so a sea man. You can just say sailor if it's that hard for you. Hard? Dude, stop. Wait, who are you guys with again? It better not be Spike. I swear to God, when I first watched this episode, I wrote that joke pressed play, and then saw this. <laughs> Where are you guys from? <laughs> Do you know how old she was when she died? Yeah, 45 is what 45? I mean. Yeah. She passed away when she was 45. 45? <sighs> okay, I can work with that. I've gone older. Wait, what? Oh, no, I, I was just trying to put myself into the head of a some sick fuck that would, that would care about something like that. Okay, anyways. Uh, it was about two o'clock in the morning, and an arm went around me, and I, I could feel it go across my back, and I looked, and at the side of the bed was a clear impression. So did you enjoy this experience with her? Sure, it's fun. It's fun? Yeah. Is, is, it, is it, like, sexual? Uh, you can no, tell not, not, not sexual as much as comforting. We have reservations here in a couple of weeks. With or without your wife? My wife will be here. Maybe a little, little ghostly menage a trois, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> now you're talking, Dan. <laughs> Zach is trying to make this as sexual of a thing as he can when he talks to every person about this. Like, he pried it out of this guy to say something nearly sexual, and when he does, he's just like, oh man, you sick fucking dog, now we're talking. What I'm trying to figure out is, are there single guys out there that have some kind of a phantom fetish? You tell me, Zach. You tell me. I'm not here to try and have an encounter like that. Oh, If it okay. happens, it happens. It happens. You know, yes, yes. I'm, I'm, You're open for it. Open for yeah, it. I'm open. To Nothing is funnier than watching Zach just lying to himself and everyone around him back and forth on this whole episode on if he wants to sleep with this ghost. Lee, what should I do? What do you, what do you think that I should do to, to charm Jerusha? Play the piano forte. I don't know how to play the piano forte. Really? But now we get a silly montage of Zach practicing different ways that he can spoon Jerusha, like playing the piano. Spring of the year, flowers of roses blown. What's up? What's up, What dude? are you doing? <laughs> Nothing. Glows like a butterfly, and when we... What are you... <laughs> oh, oh. Ooh, you okay, man? Wait, hold on, that happened way too fast. I don't even know what happened. But in case you missed it a second time, there is a second instant replay with enhanced audio. Butterfly. When they say enhancing audio on this show, they're doing nothing. It's pretty similar to the continuous shot cam from Mind Freak. It's just some text on a screen. That's it. Now the last thing on their itinerary before their lockdown with Jerusha is just terrorizing the guests at this hotel, which add that to the list of things that make you the Chris Angel of something. I thought maybe we'd walk around and I could, you know, Try my skills, try and hone in on them. Now you'd think it would take a lot to terrorize the guests staying at a haunted hotel, but you'd be surprised. Whoa. To where your hair shone like diamonds through the night. For I shall weep for your return until our midsummer's night. It was one night where you took my hand, where you came down the stairs, and it was a man. <laughs> you know, I'd rather have Chris Angel put a fucking pencil through his hand while I'm trying to get ice at my hotel at 3 in the morning than this. And while it sounds like everyone's laughing and it's just good fun, I think that's just behind the camera because this guy 
is obviously not having it. Ralph, hurry up, there's this Green Day guy following me up the stairs and he's freaking me out. So now they're back in Jerusha's old room and they're reading letters left by previous guests who have had encounters with Jerusha. Apparently that's a common thing that happens. People write down their experiences on letters and they stick them in crawl spaces. I know I've had the most lovely and unique gift in experiencing this room. And Zach is on the edge of his seat reading them. Literally, he is on the edge of his seat. He is edging so hard reading this like fanfic. Jerusha, we've read the letters. I think you're a very intimate spirit. I think that you're looking for love. I'm here looking for it too. You think she's gonna like me? She only shows to certain people, so if you're lucky enough. I brought my Vegas charm. Oh, you've gotta be kidding me. He's from Vegas too? It's just too perfect. So we're gonna use the PX device. This is like a spirit speaking spell. The EMF detector just measures electromagnetic energy, something ghosts are said to be made up of. Sure. I guess. I don't know nearly enough to dispute anything he's saying. He could literally empty out my own junk drawer on that table, and I would still just be like, alright, I guess. And while we're locked down, just outside in this van is our audio video tech, Billy Tolley. Billy will be doing some live audio and video surveillance. Aside from the haunted rooms, is there not a fully functional hotel attached to this building that he could stay in? Why are they making him stay in a cold van overnight? Whoa. Whoa. That was loud. I mean, it's worth pointing out that this building is a million years old. You're gonna hear noises regardless, and that goes for any shows that deal with hauntings in old buildings. Like, they just make noise. I mean, I live in a house that was built in the 70s, and I hear noises all the time. Maybe... Maybe this place is fucking on it. Gotta remember, this is an inn that's hundreds of years old. You know, we only know some of the history. There's no telling what went undocumented. And that's when there's a recipe for a lot of trapped spirits, trapped souls. See, he even points out how old this building is, but rather than take the rational route that most of us would take, he then takes a different route, saying that this place being so old and having so many people passing through makes it the perfect recipe for ghosts. I'm sorry, trapped spirits. Jerusha. I want you to sing for me. Oh my god. Not to keep referencing Chris Angel because I'm not the original one who made that joke, RIP Danny, but at least with Chris Angel, we all know and understand he's doing a trick. Being very weird and uncomfortable while doing it, but we all know he's doing a trick. Zach is just bullshitting in front of us constantly and hoping that the editor will make him not look insane, which... Billy, are you getting anything in Jerusha's room? I just saw like a white dress move from this door frame. Now this is where the editing really comes in clutch for them because without it, there would be nothing. Did you hear me play music for you? As long as there's a vague or indistinguishable sound or image, all the editor has to do is just tell us what it is and we'll believe it. That evidence, that encounter, will go along with what they want. And if she wants love, I'll give it to her. So now we cut to one of the special cameras back in Jerusha's room, and we see something interesting. Not really. This white mist figure manifests in the center of the room, and you can clearly make out its head, shoulders, body, in what looks to be a flowing dress. Putting text on screen to tell us what we're hearing is one thing, but to then draw an image of what you want us to see over a very, very vague flash of light is next level. This one is so vague, you could put anything over it and it would work. As you can so obviously see, standing here in the middle of Jerusha's bedroom is a 2015 Ford F-150 on its hind wheels. If I lay down, what are you gonna do to me? Tickle. Tickle. What if Nick lays down? What are you gonna do to Nick? Ass hair. <laughs> Affair. I don't care what they tell me, that thing said ass hair. Ass hair. Might as well get comfortable. I swear to God, for a split second, I thought over this montage of them getting ready for bed, they were gonna play a goddamn Sugar Ray song. Someday. But now it's finally time for the guys to split up into their separate rooms and see if Jerusha comes out, and which one she chooses. Kinda let you know that uh, I too have had my heart broken many times. You women can be pretty evil. But if you really wanna hang out, I'm the one to be chilling with, not the guy over there. Well, so far you've made quite a compelling case. I don't see how she can resist. Arusha, is it true that you died of a broken heart? What's my name? Jerusha, are you here with me right now? And if you are, like, what would we do if you were? 
Karusha, do you want to do something? Right now, Zack is channeling every one of his natural fuckboy instincts. I'm surprised he hasn't put red LEDs up yet. I'm hearing what sounds like two different spirits speaking back and forth. A deep, raspy man's voice and the same female voice that just called my name. Behind you? <laughs> what? No, yo, I'm still down if you guys are, though. Guys, I'm gonna save you some time. They replayed that probably seven fucking times. With enhanced audio, of course. Would you like me to tell you a poem or something? Roses are red, violets are blue. Why don't you come over here and lay next to me? <laughs> God, okay, enough from this guy. I'm surprised I'm saying this, but take me back to Zach, please. It's a poem. Made it up. Yeah, Aaron, we figured that out ourselves. Poor guy has no idea there's about to be a paranormal threesome next door, and he's still trying to spit game regardless. I just heard footsteps. His shuffling sounds right over here. They just cut back to Zack being thrown across the room by Jerusha, getting the shit kicked out of him. Body chills going up my legs right now. Wait. Are you touching me? I'm feeling a tingling going up my legs right now. That might just be my shingles. I have shingles. Is that you, Jerusha? This guy in the van knows it's about to go down, and he's ready for it. Is that you, Jerusha? <laughs> what? Again, I hear the same two voices talking to each other. What? Jer Jerusha, I can't hear you. S Jerusha, speak up. I can't hear- And to the zero people watching right now that want to check back in with Aaron, here you go. Jerusha, are you in here? What kind of, what kind of man were you waiting for? You were just sitting here waiting for a semen, huh? That's a guy from the sea that's a uh, probably military or better. Not what you're thinking. If I'm being honest, I didn't expect any more semen jokes. I thought maybe they got it all out of their system before, but this is what I get for expecting that. There's a man laying in his bed all alone. I've offered to hold you. I've offered to even offered a kiss. Hell, I brought you chocolates. I hate to agree with Zach, but this guy really does have no game. Not that Zach does, not that I do, but at least I'm not laying in bed trying to fuck a ghost saying things like, There's a man laying in this bed. Just a little old me. Just a bald guy with a goatee. Which, Jerusha, in 2010, bald guys with goatees, it's, it's really, really hot. Don't listen to what Zach says. He's just being mean like he always is. Can you do me a favor and touch a part of my body right now? Wow. Jerusha, touch a part of my body. Whoa. I don't want you thinking that I came here laying in the bed for some kind of a, you know, booty call. And that's who is my Valentine. That's who I'm gonna hook up with. Happy Valentine's Day. So it looks like not that much action for the boys, but let's hear what they have to say afterwards. I don't know, I was kind of telling her like, you know, I've had a broken heart just like you and just kind of relating to her. And it all of a sudden it got really weird and it, 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 I could feel like, a sensation going up both legs. Guys, I'm staying in room nine tonight. Are you serious? You're and going those, back there? <laughs> those cameras aren't allowed. <laughs> damn. <laughs> damn, Zach, you're the man. <laughs> wow. Coolest guy I know. You know, it makes sense that Jerusha wouldn't want to want to go with me because I'm just me. And, you know, nothing really ever works out for me. But, but Zach, I'm happy for him. Are you good? Nah, man, not at all. This time, no cameras. Good luck, man. So Zach, the fucking awesome dude that he is, ends up spending the night alone with Jerusha. No cameras though, so we're gonna have to just go off what he says the next day. I came to the Wayside Inn to court the lonely spirit of Jerusha. I felt her presence during our lockdown, but if you wanna know what happened my second night here, well, you'll just have to find my letter in room nine. Of course, damn. I really wanted to know what happened. I want to know if Zack ended up sleeping with Jerusha, the ghost. But the only way to do that is to read the goddamn letter. What am I going to do, though? Fly out to Boston? Book a night in the Longfellow's Wayside Inn? Room number nine, the exact room that they stayed in on the show, just to see this letter? That'd be crazy. Yeah, some would say, most, most would say. This is probably the most expensive bit I've ever done. But I knew I had to get to the bottom of so many things. What's on that letter? What happened between Zack and Jerusha? What might happen to me if I stay in this room myself? So many questions, 
Hopefully no disappointing answers. Once I finally checked in and got my key, walking through there I realized just how fucking old this place is, especially when I walked up the staircase to room number 9 and felt like Gandalf walking through a hobbit hole. As you can imagine, not a feeling I'm used to. The place was actually pretty nice, although some modern amenities would have been great. Because when I got there after a full day of traveling, I was so fucking thirsty and hungry, I went down to see if they had maybe a vending machine, a gift shop where I can get some snacks, a water fountain, anything, but they told me they don't have any, because they try to stay pretty bare bones on the amenities to stay faithful to the original inn's history, which I'd understand completely. If they didn't have air conditioning, modern bathrooms, and fucking Wi-Fi? But anyways, I went back up to my room for a bit to relax, and then something that at first I could not explain happened to me. So far, nothing out of the ordinary has happened. I don't really feel unusual, nothing weird yet, which kind of feared it happened. I know a lot of this stuff is kind of blown out of proportion, but... Wait, actually, it got really fucking cold, oh my god. Oh. Okay, anyways. Now a few notes after staying in the same room that they did. This is often something that I have never been able to do, making fun of any show. The building does make a lot of noise. Another modern amenity would be insulation, maybe? A lot of what I heard was just other people walking around and talking, and in the episode I'm pretty sure they closed down the place for it, but still the building itself made a lot of noise. Later on I took a walk outside to spot some of the locations that I remembered from the episode, like Zack learning the word semen for the first time. <laughs> Spit it out, boys! Spit it out! <laughs> Come on, you can say it! Or Zack slipping and falling. <laughs> Remember that? Butterfly, and when we... What are you... <laughs> oh, oh. Ooh, you okay, man? Then I spent some time soaking in the rich history of this old and historic hotel room, seeing what I would do if I was transported back in time. But then after a couple hours of that, I decided to venture off into town to get some snacks and drinks and some dinner before returning back and getting ready for my evening with Jerusha. And it was at this point that I realized the reality of my situation. I was sleeping alone in a haunted hotel room in the oldest inn in the country. So I left the lamp on for a little bit. Jerusha, I don't know if you can hear me right now or if you're planning on haunting me. <laughs> that would suck. Um, for what it's worth, I think Zach's weird. Don't let him tell you folks are cool. They're not cool. They weren't even cool in 2010, so if you can take anything away from my visit, just please let it be that. But I slept well. I woke up the next morning unscathed. No Jerusha, no nothing. I was quite relieved because I was kind of fucking scared from being honest. But finally, it was time for me to find Zach's letter. The whole reason that I spent all of this time and money that I would not get back because this video is getting copyright claimed and I will make no money. I quickly realized the scope of the task at hand because there were so many fucking letters. I did not know this place was that popular and how many people came from the show. I ended up coming through a few of them before just looking at the episode to see if I could find any hints or clues like what color the paper was, what it looked like, something that would help me. No luck. Then I did some googling just to give me any help, any help at all. But the same answer popped up at every turn. The letter that Zack left detailing his intimate night with Jerusha, the letter that I traveled over a thousand miles for, was stolen years ago. Someone just fucking took it. So Zack's letter. Turns out, someone probably stole it years ago. I think I'm gonna go home. Maybe a blunder on my part for not doing a very, very quick Google search before spending all that time and money traveling out there, but, you know, the saying goes, don't, you know, I actually don't think there's been a blunder quite this specifically wasteful, so I don't know, actually. But at least it was fun. I had a good time. But regardless, I think it still adds to the video. It's, it's fun kind of having a hands-on experience with a place that we watched, and I hope you guys did enjoy. I, I put a lot of fucking work into this. <laughs> if you did, leave a like rating, comment, share with your friends, subscribe if you haven't, hit the notification bell so you can stay up to date on all of my uploads. With all that being said, I thank you guys again for watching, and I will see you next Monday. Goodbye. <laughs>